must reunite it with its own kind. Where? This you must determine. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things we want to see in The Mandalorian Season 2. You have something I want. Who's this guy? Maybe he's a Gungan. Is that why you so don't want to show your face? Come on, baby. Do the magic hand thing. For this list, we're looking at plot points, characters, and moments we'd love to see in the second season of this hit Star Wars series. Please note, this will include spoilers from Season 1, as well as other Star Wars media like Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. What's your wish list for The Mandalorian Season 2? Tell us in the comments below! Number 10. Even more variety in the Outer Rim While the sequel trilogy felt very much indebted to the events of the previous films, The Mandalorian ventures into bold new territory, and that's a big part of its appeal. Open the hatch! Open the hatch! While this is the galaxy we know and love, by focusing the action on the Outer Rim and centering on new characters, the show makes for a refreshing expansion of the canon. Season 2, however, seems poised to include a greater number of connections to the films and animated shows. Favreau and Filoni have given us every reason to believe they can pull it off, but we really hope this doesn't come at the expense of world building. New planets, original characters, new alien races? We want to see more of the Outer Rim. Number 9. R2-D2 Playing a Role we're really going out on a limb with this one. To date, there's nothing to suggest that R2-D2 or his protocol droid bud will show up, but with Mando being tasked with finding Jedi to deliver the child to, he's inherently being pulled into the world of the core film series. After all, between Order 66, the Great Jedi Purge, and Darth Vader's years-long effort to wipe out his former peers, there aren't many Jedi left. <laughs> R2-D2 has a story that remains to be told about what happened to him between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. R2-D2, you've come back. Might Mando's quest for a Jedi bring him into contact with the precocious little droid? Or even a certain pair of Force sensitives? Number 8. More of Mando's Backstory No living thing has seen me without my helmet since I swore the creed. I am not a living thing. Faces are a big part of how humans relate to one another. It's our primary tool for emotional expression. So by putting our hero in a helmet, this series gave itself an uphill battle. By teasing Mando's backstory, however, the screenwriters gave our titular character an enduring sense of mystery and emotional layers to unravel. Mandalorian isn't a race. It's a creed. Season 1 taught us that our reluctant hero is a foundling, an orphan taken in by the Mandalorians, and his parents were killed during the Clone Wars. In Season 2, we hope to learn more about Din Djarin's past and how he became the man he is today. As teased in the trailer, we also seem poised to learn more about Mandalorian history, especially their dynamic with the Jedi. The songs of Eon's past tell of battles between Mandalore the Great and an order of sorcerers called Jedi. Number 7. The live-action debut of Hera Just handle those ties, Phoenix Leader. We'll cover you, Ghost. Start your run. In the lead-up to Season 2, a number of characters from the animated Star Wars series have been confirmed. Hera isn't one of them, but there have been rumors. For the uninitiated, Hera Syndulla is a Twi'lek pilot and one of the key members of the team in Star Wars Rebels. I was a little girl when the Clone War came to Ryloth. My mother hid us below ground, but I'd peek out when the Republic ships flew over as they fought to liberate my world. I dreamt of nothing more than to be up there with them. She's actually mentioned in Rogue One, and there are glimpses of her ship, the Ghost. More recently, she appeared in Star Wars Forces of Destiny, including episodes that take place after Return of the Jedi. Give my regards to General Organa. Uh, fine. Hmm. Uh, the Ghost is a superior ship to the Falcon. Wow, we finally agree on something. A strong-willed team player, Hera would make a worthy addition to Mando's supporting cast. That being said, in the name of not overloading the series, we'd also be satisfied if she simply got a cameo. Our fighter pilots will benefit greatly from your expertise. Good job, Captain Hera. Number 6. Katie Sackhoff taking charge as Bo-Katan 
having played a central role in Battlestar Galactica, this actress is basically sci-fi royalty. And we can't think of anyone better to bring Bo-Katan to live action than Sakoff, who voices the character in the animated series. Your time has come, Olmec. We know you're Maul's puppet, and we are coming for him. A former member of Death Watch, Bo-Katan Kryze is a proven warrior and leader. Chronologically, she was last seen in Star Wars Rebels, and having claimed both the Darksaber and title of Mandalore, she seemed poised for great things. I accept this sword for my sister, for my clan, and for all of Mandalore. As such, it came as quite the shock to see Moff Gideon brandishing the legendary blade in the season 1 finale of The Mandalorian. Whatever happened to Bo-Katan over the years, we hope to see her portrayed in a way that's worthy of both the character's history and the actress playing her. Number 5. Connections Between Imperials and the First Order All remaining systems will bow to the First Order and will remember this as the last day of the Republic! When fans were introduced to the First Order, there was understandably some disappointment. It's not that they weren't worthy adversaries, but what happened to the Rebel victory? Anything else? Various Star Wars novels have helped to fill in the blanks. But given that the vast majority of fans prefer to watch Star Wars than read it, it would be nice to see this transition of power play out on screen. The first season has already laid the groundwork by showing various Imperial forces at play. With Moff Gideon poised to play a major role in Season 2, we'd love to get a closer look at how the Imperial remnants are being reorganized, as well as the seeds of what will eventually become the First Order. Number 4. Moff Gideon using the Darksaber and possibly having Force powers You have something I want. Who's this guy? If Moff Gideon has the Darksaber, we sure hope he knows how to use it, and that viewers will be given some context about its history and importance to Mandalorians. Now, as we know from the events of Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, the Darksaber is not exclusively used by Force-sensitive characters. It was built by the first Mandalorian Jedi, but it's since been passed down across generations of Mandalorian warriors. Anyone can hold the Darksaber. The trick is keeping it, along with your head. Be that as it may, comments by Giancarlo Esposito, who plays Moff Gideon, have led some to believe that he's Force-sensitive. Without a master to guide him, his Force abilities would likely be rudimentary and unrefined. But this would still be an exciting twist. Number 3. More About the Child Wherever I go, he goes. So I've heard. We'd like to think that The Mandalorian would have succeeded even without the inclusion of this adorable character. But there's no denying that the child is a big factor of the show's appeal. Baby Yoda, as the internet has dubbed the creature, is not only the overarching mystery at the center of the show, but also the primary instigator of character development for our protagonist. So, in Season 2, we'd like to learn more about this bundle of joy and puppet wizardry. You must reunite it with its own kind. Where? This you must determine. Does his species have a name? A homeworld? Will he get a name? Come on, baby! Do the magic hand thing! Why is the Empire after him anyway? We also hope to see the relationship between Baby Yoda and Mando continue to grow through intimate and humorous moments. Stop touching things. Number 2. The Return of Boba Fett, without him stealing the spotlight. You are free to use any methods necessary, but I want them alive. No disintegration. As you wish. This is the character people have been wondering about from the moment The Mandalorian was first announced. Boba Fett's popularity is such that despite only having a few minutes of screen time in the original trilogy, he inspired the entire Mandalorian civilization. It's since been confirmed that Timoetta Morrison is returning to play the character, showing once and for all that Boba Fett did survive his run-in with the Sarlacc. Boba Fett. Boba Fett. 
While we are thrilled to catch up with the fan-favorite bounty hunter, we hope that Favreau has found a way to include him organically and in a way that ultimately serves Mando's story. Also, since we've got Temuera Morrison on set, maybe we could get a cameo from Rex? It's nice to meet you, 7567. Actually, my name is Rex, Captain. 501st Clone Battalion. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. More of Mando and Kara's relationship developed. Another covert Mandalorian enclave and the return of the Armorer. I said, where are they? More Bill Burr, please. Maybe he's a Gungan. Is that why you so don't want to show your face? A hut to lead the criminal underworld. Hey, Jabba. Look, Jabba. I was just on my way to pay you back. The child's first words. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. A worthy arc for Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka Tano. The way you're fighting, you wouldn't have lasted long. No, you have Kenobi's arrogance. You'll find I have many qualities for you to dislike. The Star Wars animated series have added a number of great characters to the Star Wars universe, but Ahsoka Tano is in a class of her own. Across the Clone Wars and Rebels, we've gotten to watch her grow like few other characters in the franchise. I know Anakin. Your vision is flawed. I see the Padawan needs one last lesson. Not everyone liked her when she debuted, but Ahsoka has evolved to become a beloved fan favorite and one of the most uniquely compelling heroes of the franchise. The Mandalorian marks her live-action debut, and we really hope they do her character justice. With co-creator David Filoni playing such an important role, however, we're confident her story is in good hands. We can't wait to learn what she's been up to since her Rebels days. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.